Oh, okay. Hey, what's going on guys? My name is Jay Ashcroft and I have a photography and videography business in Canada. A couple months ago, I had a client that I did an engagement shoot for. Uh, his name was Matt. And everything turned out great. They're great photos, great couple, had a really fun time. And about a week went by and Matt said, hey, Jay, I wanna be a photographer. And I said, do it. So he did. And I, I kind of led him in the right direction. I gave him some thoughts on some good gear to buy if he wants to kind of get started out. Told him a little bit about shutter speed, aperture, ISO, everything like that. And he kind of got to shooting. And then he arrived at a roadblock with the editing process. And he asked me a little bit about my process and how I edit. I had a Zoom call with him and I kind of ran him through my entire Lightroom workflow and I recorded it. So here it is. Roll it. First step for me, I have folders just on my desktop. So I'll have just a folder called folder. All right. And then yep. I'll, I'll organize things like by year. Okay. okay. Um, so within that folder folder, I'll have, and I use, I use numbers. So it stays in the order I want it to. Yeah. Oh, oh, to be finished. I want to be finished. Also, okay. to be finished folder, I'll then number that as well, so it's chronological. So for you, like first shoot you ever did, it's like 01 hunting trip, right? Okay. Like, 02 the kid playing type deal. Um, so you can just kind of organize it that way, and I'm just looking for a good sort of outdoorsy vibe here. It was six and good. Oh yeah, this is good. Fall foliage. Okay, so once I have, once I have that put into the photo and like to be finished folders, mm -hmm. I'll put the label in them. And like I don't, I don't, I don't do any organizing whatsoever with the folder with all those raw files until I'm in like. Um, and everybody's going to develop their own processes over time. Mm -hmm. I just, when I was working at that guy I told you about, Mike, um, yeah. I, I just went to a studio like every single night and he had me calling photos, like going through photos and uh, deleting stuff, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. And I, I acquired some of his processes. So that, okay. Like, he, he's been doing it for a decade. I just found it a really, really, really streamlined. I liked it. So I, I kept doing that. So when you come in here to import, it's all organized where you saved it, right? So it's my desktop for, to be finished. And that one I wanted is fall foliage. So just so yeah. they're, they're all checked. And I'll just import everything in. All of it, you all go through it. I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll import every single photo, every single raw photo in here, whether it's good or like I knew there was garbage on it. And I never, yeah. I never delete photos off my SD cards when they're like in the camera. I'll, uh, I'll just keep shooting. Like I, I knew there was a bunch of photos that were crap, but I just don't delete anything. That mm -hmm. that damages the SD card actually if you do that. Uh, so you dump your SD card into that folder, you import it all to Lightroom, you organize it this way. And then after you, like, how do you, how do you refresh your SD card to get all the photos off of it? Uh, I'm normally, I don't know, I got a pretty big SD card, so I'm leaving a lot of it just on there still. Okay, so for me, for just like for organization and for, um, if you're like, if it's getting to be too chaotic and confusing, you're trying to like, where did this start and end, et cetera, I'll yeah. like, because you have two slots. Like, do you have two SD cards? I got one. So when you do get a second one, mm -hmm. start to rotate them, because like that'll yeah. extend the life of the SD card too, right? So you have the two slots. It's being righted to SD card slot number one, and you take that out from the computer, dump all those photos, and then after you put that card back in SD slot two, keep all the photos on just so they're kept and you know, nothing can happen to them. And then yeah. your next shoot is on that empty card. That's the slot number one. Okay. 
you repeat that process. So then every second time you're using a different card and you're like, you can go into your settings on your, your camera, mm -hmm. the menu, and there's a button called format. Click format and that deletes everything off of the, the card all at once for the camera. Okay. That works. Okay. Yeah. So once you're in here, you go to develop, you go right to the start, and what I use is the star system. All right. So you're gonna you're gonna go to your keyboard and you're going to scrub through these photos. And then I like my truck, so I'm gonna hit I'm gonna hit the key one. So you know it said set rating to one there. Yeah. There's a start on there. Yeah. You're gonna keep doing that. Pop through all these photos. That was pretty decent. I'll hit one. And like you're in this phase of the edit, you're just you're just trusting your gut. If it says something to you, mm -hmm. keep it. You can always you can always get rid of it later. You know, if you end up like not actually liking it. Yeah. Right? So you just keep keep scrubbing through. That one. Um. <laughs> was that the wife? That was Emmy, yeah. <laughs> Long little photo adventure sometimes. That one. So we have starred all of these photos that we want to edit that we're excited yeah. about. Mm -hmm. and see, see down here where the mouse is? Yep. Like that. Um, it just might be hiding somewhere. You can, you can find a way to pull it up. But now you, you have effectively minimized the photos you're going to be looking at, right? Yeah. And like, you know, you can you can do different star systems as well. Like if there's like, like like this this photo and this photo, maybe you wanted to do it black and white and like not color, mm -hmm. not a color version of it at all. Then this is like a, a two. Okay. And then and you can do that and like okay, you know those are going to be your black and whites, right? You can hit you can hit D and make it black and white. Okay? Yeah. And then you know, but then what happens is you know, so you go back to this one star and these are still here. You don't you don't want them to be organized in this way. Yeah. Like this little button beside it. And right now it's showing stuff that's equal or greater to the star you selected. So you could just make it rating is equal to Okay. One if you get rid of all that. Just, so let's so just revert those back to that's a way better system than how I was doing it. Yeah, like it just it just helps to keep organized and like um quicker. Just yeah when you kind of get into like this flow, right? So mm -hmm. once I'm at this point, I kind of pick the photos. I I like to you know, th these were different times of the day, you know, so let's say around this time, between seven and one, the lighting was all pretty similar, mm -hmm. but then kind of like eight to 14, it started to get a little more like dusky, right? So I'll, I'll, I'll just click a photo that I think is a good representation of the average of what these photos are going to be, like so one to seven. 
Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll edit that one. Okay. So, mm -hmm. um, I'll come down here to calibration. And okay. I want, I want to first, first balance the color of the photo to give me like a, a starting point. So I'm, I'm going to pull this blue primary to the left. So it's somewhere around 10 usually. Uh, 10, 11, somewhere in there. Mm -hmm. And I pull the red primary closer to the orange. Because um, that, that's going to offset what happened here. Okay. So these are, these are complementary colors, blue and orange, right? Mm -hmm. so you're balancing it. You're kind of fixing. You're kind of fixing what's weird about Canon and colors um then automatically i'll i'll scoot up to this color section here yeah i'll dump my orange just a little bit because it it does become just a little, a little too much um, uh -huh. so hit the on, on your keyboard underneath there's like the uh slash slash key it's like a straight up and just like a straight up and down and a slash. And if you hit that, that'll show you, there's not much of a difference you can see right now, uh, but that'll show you before and after. You'll, you'll get a better sense of it. Um, so once you've kind of set that calibration and those color up, yeah, I always, I always start with uh, my light, right? Yeah. So I'll, I'll work my way down and it's it's all stylistic preference too, you know, but I'll move all these around. I usually leave contrast for last. We start with exposure. Then a lot of the time I'll I'll tend to dump the highlights a touch. Yeah. Especially if it's depending on how how exposure is. I'll dump them to to taste with the with the shadows around. And like as, as you continue to do this more and more, you'll get a feel for knowing like it's like doing it's like sculpting it gradually yeah but you you know what one like one move is going to do and then something else is going to offset that mm -hmm. i always find it's helpful to like go from one extreme to the next just to really get understanding for where it's kind of landing right so I put the lights up clarity like this stuff i don't really touch now, if I'm wanting to be a little punchier, then I'll pull in some contrast, which is just like the the shortcut way of like bringing up your whites and down blacks. Yeah, I'll I'll add like a touch of vibrance, touch of saturation, and then I'll and I'll start messing with my white balance. Um, something huge that video taught me was that it's it's always best to. Um, to custom dial in your your albums or your color temperature, like your white okay. balance. So, if I if I'm down there next time, dude, like I should I should reach out to you and see where you're at. Like I can just say we'll grab a coffee and I'll say what's up for half an hour and I can show you some stuff for your camera. But there's dude, I was waiting on coming up and visiting you. <laughs> okay, dude, you can if you're like driving by, you can like stop by too whatever you want, but um, there's like all these settings in your camera. One specifically is your white balance and you can set it to auto and that's good to kind of start with. But the more you shoot, the more you'll notice that if you have it in auto, so if you're shooting like the same thing a bunch, any difference in how the sun is hitting the lens is really yeah. going to affect your white balance, right? So like one, one photo is going to look like this and then the next one's going to be like too blue because the camera thinks it's doing a good thing for you, but it's not. So yeah. there's like there's like this setting in there where you can you can go to like you scroll down and you can adjust it's the white balance and you can adjust your Calvin's manually, right? So like if you're down at like thirty six hundred, it's gonna be like very blue, right? Yeah. And then and that's something that like if you're inside usually like it'll be you'll have to make it cool to make it look natural. And if you're way up here, it's like way too right but you can you can bake that into the camera settings when you shoot the photo so then when you're editing it and once we get through editing this first photo i'm going to copy and paste a bunch of settings right it's going to stay consistent because it's it's actually baked into the camera right it's not going auto yeah um but yeah so first i'll touch the temp up here 
I don't know if it's into or not. And it's all it's all just by eye. And I, I kind of I try to let my my eyes go a little bit like soft and focus type mm -hmm. deal. So exposure wise that's looking decent. You can hit that that slash key. You can start to see the difference. That's before, that's after. Right? Yeah. So a little bit more rich. From there I'll come to my tone curves here. And you want to make an S kind of with all of these. Um, so you start, you select the red one. You come to the bottom here. These are going to be like your darks. All right. And you're going to, um, you're going to slide it back and forth ever so slightly along the bottom, back and forth until you can feel, you feel like it's in the right spot. You do that for green. And blue. Like the, these are your primary colors. So like as you adjust these, anything, like everything's going to change the image. Then you come up to these are the highlights up here. So this is going to adjust any color in the highlight. And you're going to slide this up and down the side. So blue, green, and red. Okay. And then, so now you're back on the red one. And these are, these are kind of like, like mid, Mid tones here. Mm -hmm. so grab it at this point. See how there's a grid there? Yeah. You get that first line in. You grab it around that point. You're going to, same thing, kind of move it up and down until it's sitting like a comfy spot. And it's always just like tiny, tiny little changes. If you're not, not doing anything huge here. Yeah. And then the same spot up here. These are like the high the highlights, the mid highlights. Slide that up and down ever so slightly. Holy oh, shit. So that's like you really have full control over every single little detail in the image. Right? Yeah. So like that the before and after then, if you hold this on and off, you can kind of see the difference it made. So like that that's starting to add some real definition to it. It's not making it so green down here, right? Yeah made it um there, there's there's contrast contrast like light and dark contrast and then there's color contrast right so this is starting to give us a nice color contrast uh, then i'll go to the, this this grayscale one here and mm -hmm. all i want to do here is make an s right so i'm pulling this down a little bit ever so slightly it's going to crunch your blacks a touch then pull this up make it a little more punchy right and then this tail I slide that up a little bit, right? This just, it just gives it kind of like a soft filmic look. So mm -hmm. Oh, fuck yeah. Four F, So once I've done that, and the, like these are, these are all tools that like, I mean, play with them how you, like wherever your eye takes you. Yeah. Yeah, like the, this is just my style I've sort of developed over the years, and it's how I how I like my images to look. I like a clean kind of natural look to mm -hmm. my, but like it, they don't have to always be that. You can do different abstract shit. Um, so you're gonna come to your color grading here next, and this is laid out with your shadows, your midtones, and your highlights. And so it's just these three buttons here, and I start with my shadows. And I like to pull some warmth, just a little touch, like somewhere between like two and four, probably, in the shadows. Mm -hmm. And I pull a little, because see this slider here, it changes like the hue. All right, so see that, that, that circle sliding around the bigger circle? Yeah. That's going to tell you where you're pulling saturation to, like on the color reading. Right. So I always keep it at this one point. Yeah. Shadows and the midtones between two and four somewhere. And then in my highlights, which is again, this is further correcting the issue with, with Sony stuff. I'm wanting to pull some some teal my highlights. Because teal teal becomes sort of the opposite of this purpley color, which is what Sony's blues towards like right. same thing you're gonna pull a little bit of saturation there and then you come down here 
and you kind of really mess with the units there. Um, you just start messing with the blending. You slide it back and forth, like as it's starting to feel correct. If that feels good there, the balance, slide that back and forth. Feels pretty good right there to me. So again, you can you can see I've now I've pushed even further, right? Like yeah, that's I'm holding that button down so you can't see it on. Now it's on. It's off. On. You can see it's it was still even pretty like most of the green there, and now we've gained even more depth and color contrast. Yeah. Then I come down here and I I pull up a little bit of sharpening, just a touch. Uh, I manually pull in a little bit of luminance. And then th this next one here, I mean, sometimes I do this for architectural, the transform. Okay. Move this stuff around, it'll like change. Oh, shit. Uh, and change it that horizontal will change it that way. So you can get really, really kind of move around the image to get good lines. Sometimes if you hit auto, it'll give you a good result. I used to do mm -hmm. that. And uh, I've been adding grain, just a little bit of grain to my photos. So like I'll find a spot, you know, and I'll drag in some grain, just a touch. I just like the texture of it. Yeah. And like you can see, so you can change like the size and roughness of it. Uh, right like that, that that's like this that would look like a really old like old gritty kind of photo yeah, right? yeah. Um, but i mean i'll and like this is this is mimicking film film grand so i usually sit somewhere around there that's like the standard look yeah. that's crazy or after and now there's all these like other like sort of secondary things you can do, um, like other different types of tools. Um, so like something that I have done depending on the situation. Like I do this a lot in like band photos or something where people want it booty and epic looking. I'll, yeah. I'll add like a big yeah, right? Which is that's the extreme of it. Oh yeah. Like you can, if you want, uh, it also feels a little kind of vintage and filmic. It's a little cinematic, and it's it's subtle, just a little bit on the edges if you want. And then maybe you want to maybe you want to draw attention to the fact that there's this like road here. These cars are coming at you. You know, yeah. your eye, my eyes are already naturally kind of going down this road, like looking at right. And then like it's my eye starts to kind of creep up to here, but then it's brought back down to here. But like, maybe I want to exaggerate that further, and like actually draw whoever's looking at like the eye through different things. So you're gonna hit M on the keyboard, mm -hmm. which is the mask. You can just click up here, right? Yeah. And so that's been engaged, and you see this little crosshair here, right? Um, what a mask does is that it, it creates, like, see the red going on. Creates this plane of like custom change that can happen within that photo. So I want to make draw less attention to these poles, right? So I made a mask on there, and I'm gonna just make that a little darker. Exposure, bring down the shadows a touch. The blacks. Right? Now you can turn that on and off to see what you've done. It's subtle, right? Mm -hmm. And then if you hit M again, we'll make a new mask. You can always pull from off the edge of the photo. Mask this here. That exposure not good. So touch hit M again. Good. That part. Mm -hmm. Now maybe you're feeling like your sky is too bright up here. So hit M again. So now you've, it's really kind of. You really emphasize that road. Yeah, like, we're, like that, that is what the image is about, is that 
sky went down. Ever. Mm -hmm. Now, if if you're seeing like you're gonna get dots sometimes, you know, just dust dots. Mm -hmm. Just click on the image anymore. It's gonna zoom in, right? And you can you can customize up here. See where mouse is up there on the left. Yeah. You customize how much you want it to zoom in, right? So if you're on, if you zoom in to 400, and that's too much, like 200 instead, and then it mm. remembers that it's 200. But you have like two options here. I like to, I like to keep it at, I like to keep it at 400 or 100, right? Okay. You click on and off. It remembers the last thing you put, so it's either fit or it's at 100. Like if, I'm, if I'm feeling like you grab it, move it around. If I'm feeling like 100 is too far away, then I'll make it 400. But for this case, 100 is close enough. I can see those dust spots. Now I'm going to hit Q, which is the heal button, right? Which is also, see our mouse is right there with the band aid? Yeah. Click that. And there's, there's, um, there's two different. There's a few different versions here. I never use the eraser. Sometimes I use the stamp tool, which is yeah. which is literally like, you know, I I I make that there. And it's like an exact stamp with what I put the. Oh. Right. That's a, yeah. that's a stamp. In this case, we're not we're not wanting like a really harsh line around what we're repairing here. So we're gonna yeah. do. You can do the just the band aid, which is it kind of feathers it in and blends it nicely, right? And you can you can change. Let's see there, you can change the size of the feather. See how it's changing. Mm -hmm. I usually keep it around here somewhere. Capacity, I keep it hundred, and then the size. If you have a mouse that has like a a wheel on it yeah. that'll that'll change the size that you're you're, you're uh, repairing so i'm just mm -hmm. gonna i'm just gonna go on all these little dust marks all right i click i i kind of move this around let it blend oh okay it's rid of all the the dust i'll i'll do this like on some instances where maybe there's something in the image that i thought like it's drawing my attention to the purpose of the photo I'm not feeling happy about it. I'll use this to like erase things that I don't want to film. I do this. I do this to like pretty much every portrait I take. Now, if it's like this is how you get rid of pimples or anything like that. Yeah. yeah, if it's if it's stuff that's in the photo and it looks like it's not supposed to be, but it just get rid of it. So okay. I don't. You could even say like you didn't want that. Uh, it's not perfect. You could say you didn't want that sign there. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. But I, I like the sign. That's yeah. So this this photo feels good. I I like this photo. Um, I like the edit on it. So. Double check. Mm -hmm. Nice. What I'll do is I'll, I'll have it selected and I'll hit Command C. And you don't want to copy everything, right? Because it's it's going to be like a instance to instance basis. Blend. Um, you're going to have your profile, basic, like all this. Yeah. Curve. Yeah. HSL. Yeah. 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 Not this. This is those transforms I showed you on the side. Yeah. But it's like doing this, doing this stuff, like that might not be applicable to the other photos. Mm -hmm. um, oh, eh. So you're not going to check that. You're going to do the effects. You're not going to do healing. Healing is those little those little things you did. Yeah. You don't want to copy that. I don't copy the crop either, like the straight angle, and I don't copy any of the masking. This, this was just custom for this photo, right? 
but you've copied all your other settings, which is like a look that you've created. Okay. I, and then I just go back to the start and I hit Command V. What the fuck? Yeah, it looks looks pretty good. You know, I can leave for now. This is like hardly the same photo. So it looks pretty good. Nice one. Yeah, it looks a little dark though. It's like my yeah. settings might have changed a little bit. So you're using the same settings from the one picture you edited to run through the whole profile. Yeah, run, run through all the photos, yeah. yeah you, you essentially edit once on like the photo that looks like the average of everything else you shot, and mm -hmm. then and then you just copy and paste the settings onto like every single photo, and then you make small you make small tweaks to it as you go, right? Um, yes, yeah, so that's good. This was the original photo we edited here. It's a little sunnier here, so this is going to be warmer. Yeah, it's like a little too warm, right? So I'll I'll dial back on the temperature there a little bit. Yeah, that's um, that's pretty good. Okay, well, a little sunnier, so this is probably too warm. It's bad though, and I I'm not liking I'm not like the thing yet. Yeah, All right, so I'll ditch that. <laughs> And you know, here it's very obvious that all of these little dots are here. So, as I'm copying and pasting settings, I'll usually want to do this if I if I feel like it. But mo most of the time, like I'll get all my color done first, and then yeah. I'll I'll go back through and I'll get like all the spot treatment stuff, and then I'll go back through and do all the cropping. So, um, oh, okay. So if you if you get rid of a setting that you don't want on the rest of the photos, then like take the, I took that big net off, right? So yeah. I recopy and the big net won't be there. Right. So every time you make an update, like as the as you're going through sequence and the lights changing, right? Yeah. Right, you're recopying your settings so that you can kind of adjust adjust for the light. You know, like here, like this is getting way too warm now because the um, the light was changing the sky. So it's, it's pretty decent before and after. I'll mm -hmm. copy that because that's been like a drastic change in light. Vegas started your no, I I want this to be more punchy, so I'll I'll bring up like my whites a little bit. You know? Now this is looking a little like kind of purpley magenta to me now. You know, so I'll, I'll pull some green back in. Um, in because the light's changing in the sky, I'll come back into this tone curve here. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna touch the bottom one. I'm just gonna touch this one on the red to start. Just kind of dial back in what looks good to my eye. Yeah. Do you wear glasses at all? No. Okay. I these glasses. Uh, like the lens sees more magenta. So I, I pull them down when I'm like looking at the color. Oh, okay. If you ever if you ever do have to get glasses, just keep that in mind. If uh, if you're having to make the little color adjustments, this is looking pretty good now. I wanted to cool that road off a little bit. I'll I'll yeah I'll then come down here and I'll play with these as well, like the color grading. Yeah. So, uh, that's looking good to me. So I'll recopy those settings on that photo. Over here. And it's pretty decent. I'd like to see the sky a little bit more, so you can dump the highlights a bit. Yeah. This guy. It's a little too warm, I think. Pull it down and touch.
it's just not a great photo. Like I, I'm not stoked about that, so I'll just I'll just hit zero. Oh, okay. I, I don't want that photo anymore. So I hit zero and I get it get it out of what what I was editing. The situation oh, is, you know, maybe you want to see more detail in here. You, know, you can like crank the shadows, right? But like that, right. that's a little bit unnatural, you know. So play around a little bit, right? Slide it around. I don't, I don't like this random. I don't know what that is? If it was a bird, maybe I keep it. Copy <laughs> that. Throw around there. This is real. It's, it's a little too saturated for me. A little dark. I would crank up the exposure, then bring a little bit of punch back in. I can you see all this stuff. Um, usually, you know, if you're fixing something on like a line like that, um, just always try to keep it on that same line. So it's like the same look. Yeah. Right? Depending where you drag it, it's going to look different. You blend it enough, it can look pretty seamless. So I was, uh, good. All right, then see if you like you like this and like you you want a color version and a black and white version. You can uh, click back on it. You right click and you make a create virtual copy. Okay. All right, so it gives you a whole separate photo with the settings and like everything's kind of baked in there. But you come to the second photo and you hit. <laughs> And that makes it black and white, or you, oh. can, or you can just click black and white up here. All right, mm -hmm. that gives black and white, and then then you have these these black this black and white mix you can play with. Um, it's just gonna read differently, right? So like as I I just go I work my way down, I yeah. slide through all of these, and I I kind of just get by eye what I'm liking in terms of. Contrast that one's that's the real it does all the difference. So that's happening because there's a lot of blue in this image. Yeah. A little darker and bluier, so but down. Check this out. So yeah, let me turn this on and off. See so really push that black and white image. Oh yeah. So once, once I've gone all the way through and done all this, then I'll kind of get to cropping, right? Um, okay. So the thing I like to do is go to like, I'll go to auto first, just to give it a chance to see what it does. Sometimes it like tweaks out. Like, sure, that looks good, but like, maybe I want this kind of in the uh, center. And I'll, you hit R, R is the shortcut for crop, you just click up there. Oh, okay. So, did that one. We'll go to the next one. I'd like to get this in here. I always go by horizon, right? This little dot of the hit auto, see if it does anything. Yeah, so it's just kind of straight at that horizon. Try to use the rule of thirds a lot. So this grid here, yeah. Um, I you know place things on thirds. So I've I place the center of these two vehicles on this third. Oh, that's cool. Draw more attention there. Stop it. <laughs> You need to crop that one. That's not bad. It's pretty nice. Yeah. And then here I'm, I'm letting the that's out of focus, but it's still nice having that or that like point to the center. Yeah. So third. Okay. 
this. It's dropping this a little bit better there. It's good. It's awesome. Here and at the end of the road, just kind of centering it in between these two points. Yeah. Same thing here. So you can use this, see this little dash up here? Kind yeah. Of draw, in my, draw a line with your eye. It's kind of in the center. I think that's good. Is that just like dust on the lens or? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something, something's pretty useful is you can like see up here where my mouse is. Yeah. You can see all your settings. You know, like if you're seeing something, you're like, what was I thinking? Like, why does that <laughs> look like that? You can like see the settings you used. Yeah. And then like, you know, you learn from next time. It's like, oh, like that it would have been better if like this foreground was a little more in focus. So okay. next time, I mean, next time maybe I'll dump my shutter speed to like 600 and something or even less. Yeah. Crank up my aperture a bit, you know? Or maybe I want it to be fuzzier and say this was like a prime lens that was a 1.8. Okay, next time I want this to be like not so in focus. Next time I'll I'll bring this setting down to 1.8 and crank my shutter a little higher. Right. Oh, okay. Yeah, because normally I'm running a, a a higher shutter speed with a lower aperture, but then I'm running um uh iso in uh auto auto okay well you can when you feel like ready to and you feel comfortable doing it you can go full full auto and you always the rule is to always have a variable right like depending on the shoot for me like generally my shutter will be the variable okay but like if you want a very specific result um the the iso or the aperture can become the variable right mm -hmm. especially in like a live shooting session choosy about that um, because as you know the more you move the shutter around like higher shutter speed it freezes stuff really good if you got a lower shutter speed it lets motion happen maybe and sometimes yeah. you want like a nice motion blur right mm -hmm. if you want you want your shutter to be like 1 over 80 and have your ISO super super low so it'll allow for that crank mm -hmm. up your, your aperture a little bit and like maybe that 1 over 80 is going to like maybe that's a motion blur of Maybe you're um, you're shooting a like a, a landscape, like a cityscape photo, and maybe yeah. you want, maybe you want the cars to be a little blurry, right? Like maybe you're locked up on a tripod and you you, you, hit, you take that photo, and the cars are kind of like not super crisp or detailed. You know? So you can like play play with the settings in that way to make like different effects that, that you want. So th this will happen sometimes. Now that I'm looking at this photo, it's a little a little too blue for me. Yeah. I'm going to warm it up just a little bit. I like that. And it's not, it's like a little washed out. So I'll pull in some contrast. Okay. okay. Black and white. So I'm happy with all these. Once I'm done editing and like, I mean, I, so we started with all these photos, 140, right? So I just mm -hmm. clicked off that mouse, that star option. Yeah. Click back on the star. I've selected 14 that I'm stoked about. Sweet. So I hit Command A, right, which is uh, select all. Okay. Um, then I hit Shift Command E, which is export. Which you can you can also find it up here. I never do. Yeah, export. So file export. Okay. And your settings should look like this. Um, so I have this checked, renamed to custom name and sequence. So they're in chronolog chronological order of how you export them. Okay. 
the start of each photo, there's going to be a number and you're going to customize this to whatever you want. So like, uh, teach Matt library, right? TMLR. Library. Then, uh, quality is at a hundred. I don't have that checked. The image format, you're switching these raws into JPEG. Mm -hmm. This one's important. Make sure it's sRGB. Okay. Um, Emma was at like exporting some photos and they looked really weird. Not horribly, horribly weird, but like she was on like Pro Photo RGB, which is okay. which is a whole different color space. So like the colors interpreted different and it, it just makes it look funky. Mm -hmm. um, your image sizing should be 300 pixels per inch. No. I don't bother with the watermark. I just drink through stuff. And that's it. So then you, I organize my stuff in like the same way as how I look like photos in the same way as the new ones. So I have a folder called photo 24 finished and I put it in that sequence. So the 06, 06, um, teach math and did mm -hmm. choose and you export this 14 files. Okay. That was a lot. That's, okay. That's, that's my, that's pretty much my whole process, man. Alrighty, that's it. I hope you gained something from kind of watching how I work through my photo edits in Lightroom. As you can see, this is a brand new channel, but I have been marinating for about a decade now. So if you like this video, feel free to like it. If you want to see more of this kind of thing and or my philosophical ramblings about life and business, then feel free to subscribe. I got a lot more coming down the barrel. And leave a comment if you have any questions about anything that I've gone over in this video or or if there's something that you would like to know more about that has nothing to do with this video, but it has to do with photography, filmmaking, or the business of photography and filmmaking. All right, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Oh, okay.